All right. Well, welcome everybody to another installment of the uh, Jack Star Guitar Hour. I've got a special guest with me, Dave Curry. Dave, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. And um, we have no idea what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> kind of typical for rock musicians, but we're just going to play guitar and talk about the guitar and maybe play a couple of songs and some give some stock advice and marriage advice. Um, uh, what else? Can Particulate matter in the atmosphere? Yes. Movie reviews. And actually, none of the above. We're just going to play music. So, so let's start off. Uh, what kind of songs do you like to do, generally speaking? <sighs> well, that, that's, it de kind of depends on where, really. You know, um, let's just do a little... Uh, I notice you have notes here. Good. We'll do the, let's do the feeling all right thing. Feeling all right. And okay. what I do is I do like a little... Con Thank you. Kind of like, uh, kind of Joe Cocker-ish. Okay. But then we add the other stuff later. Okay. You did C. Correct. All right. So it seems I've got to leave before I start to scream. Somebody locked the door and took the key. Feeling alright. And I'm feeling good myself. Wonder where, and when I think of you, I start to cry. Just can't waste my time, I must have dry. Gotta stop believing in all of your lies. Cause there's too much to do before I die. Feeling alright, I'm not feeling no good myself. Feeling alright. I'm feeling good myself. Jack Star! Alright, 
Fist pump. All right. Okay. So, so we have no idea what we're doing, but we're going to do more of it. Um, right. Okay. It's like we took a wrong turn, but we kept on going. And it's 40 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that sounded pretty cool. That's a show on you. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. Oh, I love this guy. Okay. I mean, what is it? Is it just that? It's just, I don't know. It's French heritage or something? It's, or just it's clean, healthy living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I tried to do that. Didn't, didn't let's work. do. You know what? Let's do some blues. Um, okay. Because I I've seen you at Lose Blues, so I get the blues connection. Lose Blues. Well, plus, you know, growing up near Chicago didn't hurt. It didn't hurt at all, really. Um, oh, you know, uh, messing with the kid. Sure. Let's do it. The Steppenwolf did it the same song. It was called Tighten Up Your Wig, but it, ba -da 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 -da. right, Steppenwolf. The guys that did Born to be Wild. Yes, yes. Okay. So we do it in G, and can you sing it, or we'll kind of switch on and off? Why don't we it? just play it? Cause, uh, okay, let's just play it. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I hear about the kid putting down Everybody wants to put the kid down, yeah Call it what you will Well, you can call it what you want I call it messing with the kid Well, the kid plays it fast And the kid plays it hard I Say what I mean And I mean what I say Well, you can call it what you want. I call it messing with the kid. Dave Curry.
turn up a hair? Tune up or turn up? Turn up, man. <laughs> you heard it first. I asked another guitar player to play louder. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Ah, maturity. <laughs> maturity, that's right. Uh, how? Okay, here you go. Okay. Right. So, um, let me interrupt all this musical merriment and ask you a question or two. Sure. When you were starting to play that thing we all love called the guitar, who, who were your influences? Who did you like? Those guys. Those guys, okay. The, the Beatles. Beatles on Ed Sullivan, I think, changed the world. Yes. And you know, I had an older sister who had boyfriends that played guitar. And I thought, huh. Oh. You had an older sister, too? I still do, yeah. she's. <laughs> I still do, and there she is. Regine. Oh, hi. Hey, hey. hey everybody. Hi. <laughs> but uh, she always had boyfriends that played guitar so I could, you know, pick up a little. And the Stones and the Beatles and the British Invasion. All that good stuff. Yeah, right. there was, you know, and there was a lot of blues around Chicago, some local acts mm -hmm. that were um, just, they played every weekend. You could see, like, Siegel Schwal Blues Band. Yeah, I remember that. Paul um, Butterfield. Uh, yeah, I saw him. There, I mean, it was 50 miles to go and see anybody. Wow. You know, or 30 miles to Milwaukee. That also had another kind of, cool. all the Canadian stuff that didn't make it, it <laughs> made it in Milwaukee. But it was, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was a lot of music. Okay, so what was the very first song you learned how to play on the guitar? Oh, God. I think the one I tried to learn how to play was House of the Rising Sun. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay. I play it much better now, but it's... it's <laughs> right, I hear you. <laughs> oh, I got to sing it too? Well, you know, hey, you're, you're getting... Right. You're you getting. said play. <laughs> All, right, All right, okay. All right, I'll, I'll sing it. You do it. Okay. okay. But take two. Be. This is the this is the in tune with vocals take. I should probably sort tune my of. guitar too, but I don't want to ruin my reputation. That's co close. Okay. Oh, that's what those are for. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll do a little guitar intro. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
children's not to do what I have done. House of the rising sun. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was like one of the first songs I learned too. Which makes me understand one thing. We're both really old. <laughs> well, we're, I think the terminology, proper uh, vernacular is aging rockers. Yes, we're aging. Thank you. Thank you. Kids call us old. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. But I mean, the significance of that song is just, it, uh, it was uh, it, it, progressions. You learn in your first position. Yes. And so to learn, you know, those. I think another one that, that was easier was... Uh, Gloria? Yeah. Which in the Midwest happened to be, um, it, it was a hit by, I think, Van Morrison and them first, and internationally, but there was a band from Chicago that had a regional hit called The Shadows of Night, and that one got all the airplay from the Chicago stations. So actually, that was, it got all the airplay in New York, too. Did it? All right, so, but it Van Morrison actually did it first. Yeah. And then The Doors did it again. Right. But it was just, you know, interesting. But that was easier because it was... And the magical EDA got that. Let's and then you got to do. And also the. Right. Well, I told you once and I told you twice. Never listen to my advice. Too much pain and too much sorrow. Will I feel the same tomorrow? You know, the e EDNA thing, there's yeah. probably a thousand other songs. It's true, man. It's but, really you know, true. that one is Gloria. Was, it was about the time. I guess I'm aging myself, but. And yeah. a Stone song. And, yeah. uh, Those are like all the same songs that I learned to play. It's really imagine uncanny. Imagine that. It's very, very weird. And you grew up in New York yeah. or in Europe? No, in New York. Uh, okay, I thought at you that grew up time, in Europe. Until uh, I was about 10, and then I came here, right. and then I heard uh, the, Beatles the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. It was right around the same time that I uh, learned to speak English, so it worked out good. And they sort of spoke English. Yeah, they <laughs> sort of did, yeah. With a, with a Scouser accent. But that's, right, That's exactly. interesting. Yeah. So in New York City, you had to be exposed to everything. You really did. And same thing in Chicago. I wasn't in Chicago, but I mean, New York is... That's okay. I wasn't in New York City. All right. All right. Good. So, we're we're <laughs> so, so we're both like kind of on the outskirts. Not, yeah, but I mean, the radio stations were influential. Yes. And, you know, having an older sister... And I had an older sister, too. But see, older sisters were the, you know, the cool ones because you wanted to know how... How do the girls like? What are the girls like? So, you know, you had to ask... <laughs> I had an older brother too, but he was like a jock and a wrestler and uh, went to Vietnam and stuff. But you know, sister was you know, that's who you got your advice from, right? I don't know. I never got any advice from Regine. Did <laughs> well, you should have asked because uh, I should know. I'm just kidding. I, of course, I got advice. I'm sure she had more than a saucer full. You know? Yes, she did. Let me just. So, the so what can we do? Uh, do you? Do you like songs? You want to take a quick break? Yeah, we're going to do that. We'll go, we'll go to the break on a little sh shuffle in the key of C. I'm going to okay. play some chords. All right. This one is, I usually do a song called I'm Ready by Muddy Waters. Okay. Can be. Well, I'm ready for 
for you, baby. I hope you're ready for me. Dave Curry on the guitar. Back. We're taking a short break.
We are back. And, um, you know, we were sitting around talking with my guest Dave Curry, uh, who plays all over Brevard County and lots of other places. And um, we're talking about, like, some of the various techniques that guitar players use, you know. And um, I think one of them was uh, volume swells, right? Mm -hmm. Can you show us uh, to the large internet audience what we are talking about okay and it's especially easy on a stratocaster because you happen to have the volume pedal right here so so you kind of you pick a note and then you turn the volume up slowly Now you should demonstrate it because you have echo on in it. The echo gives it another. Well, the echo definitely helps, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a cool technique. And the way I found out about it is a guy named Leslie West. Really? Van Mountain. Mountain, okay. He was the first guy that I saw. Another New Yorker. Now, who did you, how, who, no. who did that first that you saw doing it? Probably Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck, okay, cool. Or Jimmy Page. Or one of that one dead of the, gang. One of those guys, okay. The Yardbird gang. All right. Well, I saw Leslie... Weinstein, Leslie West. He's a good boy. He's a good guy. <laughs> right. Nice Irish name. I saw him doing it in a, in a club on Long Island, a club that I snuck in to get in. And it was just like I mean, the coolest Being 39, thing. you must have been. Right. Yeah, I had to sneak in. I was like two years old. Yeah. And, uh, and he was doing this, and, you know, he was going like. You know, Mississippi. <laughs> So that was Leslie for all you people, Mississippi Queen. So I saw him doing it. But there's other techniques that you touched on one of them, the little octave stuff you were doing above the fret, which is another Jeff Beck thing. Could you do that for our viewing audience? Harmonics? Yeah. Right. Now it's funny that you did that up there because there's no vibrato on your guitar. Well, I, I have one. It just it's in the case. Okay. Because this is a one way of compensating for the lack of vibrato. Okay, you but just, you've got it right there. Right. That right. The only thing is, it makes it go out of tune. So now, hold on. Ooh. That's why I locked this down and try to simulate it some other way. Okay, I'm back, back in tune. I don't usually like to use that one either, but this is cool up here. So that's a cool thing. A, a technique that I use uh, sometimes is I'll hit the 12, 12 uh, frets above whatever note. So if I'm doing like a little blues lick, I'll go like... And you can do that anywhere on the on the guitar. Now. So that's a cool technique. Well, Jim, and the, Jimmy Hendrix did that in the Purple Haze solo. He did. That's what made it so interesting. Go, wow, now, 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 now. Well, Jimmy Hendrix did everything, but right. that's kind of a trick that uh, uh, classical guitarists have been doing for quite a. Yeah. Tapping technique. Exactly. And with, uh, they have a way of doing it where they, it's called pinch harmonics that I really don't know how to do, but it's kind of like. You but finger I, the note. But I've seen you do pinch harmonics during the song Tush.
that's another thing too, which is cool because not only did, did uh, you know they do the pinch harmonic thing, but uh, Billy Gibbons, I mean, just did all the tricks that you can conceive of. You Texas know. boy, that's the other blues guys come from right. down there. He did, I mean, everything. It's just like incredible, you know, all that stuff. So let's do a blues song, and here's what there's a point to all this rambling. This dissertation. Yeah, I used Ooh, to, I used to wow. fancy college really. boy. All oh, right. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I had a year in a junior college. Now, just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, me too. Chasing girls. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, the point is that we're going to use all these various techniques in uh, in our version of the Thrill Is Gone. We'll do it in B minor. Basically, um, did BB King was he a major influence on you? Like, I could, he, for me, he was. To be honest with you, yeah. Much, much later, more recently, because I got to, I was in the house band at his Orlando club, uh, so it was really a gas to be able to play uh, at the House of Blues, right? No, BB King's in Orlando at BB oh, King's. Wow, I didn't even uh, know there was a BB. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. it's, it's one of the bigger ones, if cool. not the biggest. And it's, it was just a, a, a just a trip to be in BB wow. King's playing Thrill Is Gone in his house. It was like, you know, yeah. I never got to meet him. He but, never showed up. Well, he was contracted to do a couple of shows a year, but you know, you can't get around him. Right. I mean, he's first he's of like, all, he's eighty five years old. He's eighty five years old. He's got about twenty kids, right? Uh, if, I, yeah, if I looked a lot better and was a different gender, maybe, but. <laughs> <you know. laughs> But it, you know, it was just it was it was cool to be able to play in BB's house, you know, essentially. So, so he influenced you later on. Appreciating right. that you don't have to play every note on the neck to make it work. I learned like two licks from BB King. One lick that he always does is he always goes. He always goes. He always hits. He always hits that first, which I find kind of funny, but. And I forgot why he does it. It's very percussive. You know. Just he just he does it right. He does it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To, um, he does it right. And then the other lick I got from BB King. It seems like he starts every song like you know he just it's just like yeah, it's kind of that bend in the second. Actually. Sort of the BB and Albert and Freddie King, they all had that, those weird. Yeah. 
It's almost like it's almost like somebody moaning or crying, yeah. uh, and so therefore it has that bluesy thing going on, you know. It's emotional, supposedly, you know, and and then Stevie Ray Vaughan took that one step further and like did it with like two notes, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, well, Stevie pretty much took the ball and ran. Basically, he took everything and then upped it. So and, and Hendrix as well. And Hendrix that was, as that well. That was an initial. But another Texas guy. So is, so is Freddie King and Albert King. So They're something all, in the water there. Well, you kind of get, you know, being in certain Maybe areas, it's this kind of water. That that's it. Well, that's what they drank in Milwaukee. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is... Uh, for all you children out there in internet land, this is actually filled with root beer. <laughs> okay, so we're getting back to understanding how all this craziness evolved. Did it, did it start off with a guy that did this? I just have to mention Chuck Berry because it seemed like he gets, he's actually underrated in I'm a way. I'm glad you mentioned him because w without him, Hendrix couldn't have happened. Right, exactly. You know, because, and, he, and he's kind of a bridge between country and blues, Chuck Berry, yes. and rockabilly, sort of. There's a million other guys that we haven't mentioned, but as far as uh, influence, influencing the English guys that we listen to, right. Keith Richard was a huge Chuck Berry fan. Like There'd be know. no Rolling Stones without Chuck Berry. I would have been. And the name. St. Louis Arch may not have even existed, but you know. And and I think he may cure cancer yet before he passes he's, away. He's got an interesting <laughs> book. Have yeah. you read it? I, I, I'm almost finished with it. I'll let you. I'll let you check it out. It's. All it's I know is, Chuck, if you're out there watching, we love you, but you are one strange dude. <laughs> <laughs> The, ironically enough, the first concert I ever went to right. was a baptism of fire. It was Bo Diddley, Little Richard, and Chuck Berry. Oh, wow. That was cool. It was awesome. It was like, that's the way to do it, you know, because Little Richard has had his way of doing it. Did you it. say Bo Diddley? Bo Diddley. Was Bo Diddley doing this? That was his thing. <laughs> But I knew who Little Richard was kind of from the Beatles, and of course Chuck Berry was like, you know. I knew who he was because of the Rolling Stones, which is really weird because I had to find out from, about an American guy. From through, a, through, the through. And it was like, they, I think they did something like. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your love to me. So, now, which was a Buddy Holly song. Uh, and I thought it was a Bo Diddley song. No, no, no. It's You're the right, Bo Diddley it is a beat. Bo, it's the Bo Diddley and, beat. And, and, uh, it just, but yeah. that was commonplace back then where white artists would take a black you know, song or a black groove or whatever and then... Sell it back to us. Right, exactly. 
with an English ac- with an English accent. It, that's which is like Elvis. Uh, people don't realize that his first big hit, uh, "Hound Dog." was a big Mama Thornton song from the 1930s. So let's do Hound Dog. Okay. A, B. I I do it more like an upbeat thing. Um, All right. You ain't nothing but a hound. Right in old town. That's a good one, too. Your your tonality thing. All right, and I'll even uh, confess to where I got that from. Richie Blackmore. Well, the guy in Kiss actually started doing it, but you just take like a note and you go... And then then I think I saw Joe Perry do it, too. Yardbird song, by the way. Yeah, a lot of times it, it gets confusing because so many people were in doing the same kind of groundbreaking riffs at the same time. Like, um, like okay, the Van Halen thing that everybody you know loves with the tapping and all that. There were people doing that before Eddie, but they weren't getting the recognition. Well, uh, the class guitar players have been doing it along with the bigger right. pinches and stuff for you know forever, forever, forever yeah. man. You know. Like and I heard know. blues guys, you know, going. You know, do, you re- do you remember a song called Let's Work Together by, um, oh, God, Let's Work Together. No, 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 uh, not Savoy Brown. American band uh, from L.A. Uh, they were, to get going, I can't stay here long now. They played at Woodstock. They played at Woodstock. Wow. Yeah, what's the name? You got, anybody remember that one? No. Studio audience. Let's um, get together. <laughs> um, Boogie Band, Boogie Band, by Big Bob Height. Uh, oh, Can Heat. Can Heat. Let's okay. work together. Okay, yeah. uh, Harvey Mandel was doing that. Brilliant. Come right together, we will stand every boy, and every, every woman, woman let's work together. Okay, so that was kind of on Main Street, but... More trivia, Harvey Mandel was actually asked to join the Rolling Stones, and for whatever reason, he didn't do it. But, uh, yeah. He's an American, yeah. 
Don't know why, but was, was, he was a number of people. Uh, Rory Gallagher, Rory Jeff Gallagher Beck. was doing all that stuff too. Uh, it was because uh, it's a cool thing to go. You know, it's a blues thing. <laughs> guitar thing you know it's a guitar just, thing and then you got like uh, guys doing like this stuff but but you know all that stuff like Ingve, then you got the, you know all that crazy stuff with you know but there's a million techniques, and then you got Wes Montgomery, which you know his technique. Yeah, it's an octave. Let, let me play something. I'm going to play some chords and give our audience a taste of, of octaves. B minor. Okay. Because you you do time. it the correct you do it the correct way, yeah. That's I mean, what not that there is a correct way, but no, there but really isn't. There it's isn't. But whatever you, works best for you. Exactly. Thank you for saying that. Uh, but you do it the Wes Montgomery way. I do it the rock and roll way, which is just like a chord, you know? and I'll go. <laughs> It all, it's all good. It's all good. Right. You, know? you should be and telling we, the, the people that are from somewhere other than here that Wes Montgomery was another, another black it, American jazz guitarist from the 40s and 50s. Influential in the, when we were learning how to play, yeah, they, he was one of the guys that you would listen to, him, Hendrix, B.B., Freddie George King. Benson, just a million of them. There's and this guy. <laughs> Jack Star? Nope. <laughs> Johnny Winter. Okay. Yeah, that's another Texas guy. That is so true, right? <coughs> Johnny Winter, Mean Town Blues. Okay. And you know everybody knows Johnny for. Which Rick Derringer wrote, but. And here's the funny thing: you went to do the riff. You did it differently than I did. Do it your way this time. Okay. I did like I'm this. Not But you know what? It would complement it complements each other anyway. We're both kind of doing sort of a D. Right, exactly. Right? But we're doing it differently. And, uh, For you out there that don't remember this song, it goes like this. Wait, wait, wait. It was a band called the Junkers, they were laying it down. There's a high on the time, hope you are too. Lord, am I a friend? 
of Johnny Winters. Okay. Uh, basically, we, we face the whole history of guitar. We talk about everything. Who else have we left out of this equation? Hmm. Probably like a million people. Right? Yeah, a zillion, a zillion guys, but I mean, you're talking about from what era? You know, I mean, the guys that influenced... Um, Us aren't the same guys that influenced well, uh, whoever. Well, I mean, T-Bone Walker grew from the Robert Johnson Delta Blues stuff, right. and that's who Chuck Berry saw. And Hendrix and guys like that, and you know, they're just like. So it just goes on and on. And oh, and who on. was the other guy? Who's the guy who used to play behind his back all the time? Oops. Well, microphone. Well, speaking of <laughs> speaking of playing behind your back, we have a young lady in our studio audience named Yvette, who who can actually play behind her back. She's got the oh. coolest hair in the room. Too. And she, come up here, Yvette. Oh, I can't. Come on. Now. Now, now, Yvette's been coming up to Lose Blues and jamming with Dave Curry. I think it's on Tuesday nights, right? Whenever possible, yeah. Whenever possible. She's and, got um, the hair like we used to have in the 70s. <laughs> turn around so the studio eyes can at see it. Look at Holy all that hair. Holy moly. But, but Yvette does a really good thing. She plays the guitar. W would you like to try it on, on national television? <laughs> International. Okay. International. Oh, okay. I don't know what we're playing, though. Doesn't matter. Just Doesn't do matter. It. Doesn't matter. Okay, live. We're having a very. Um, here's a tip. Sorry about that. Here we are. Yvette Lepret. Yvette's going to do something very, very cool. She's going to play guitar. I don't care. Behind her back. Is that what you do? No, it's behind the head. Behind the head. Behind her head. Sorry. About this. Okay. <laughs> so it was something cool, anyway. Don't be technical, Jack. Okay. Yeah. All right. Come on. How about? Uh, it's got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Mustang Sally. And C. Right. Okay. <laughs> You put her on the spot and you did great. You Hi. just put her on the spot and she did great. Thank you. And uh, Yvette, you can see her on uh, Tuesdays. Yep. So, uh, jamming with Dave Curry at Lose Blues. In Melbourne Beach. That's when Florida. She, when she can get a babysitter. That was awesome. <laughs> she can't get a babysitter. Okay. You are now excused. Stop upstaging me. Go back to the audience. No, I'm just <laughs> great hair. Why don't you stand behind me so I We're can... good on time, Jack. So what? Do you guys want to wrap it up? Yeah. We're going to do one last song, uh, and then we're going to wrap up this show. But that was really very cool. And Yvette, really, we, I want to thank you for having the guys to just get up there and doing it. <laughs> Song with like uh you know uh, Hoochie Coochie Man? It's it's kind of uh, like ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah. One, That's who two, we forgot to three. mention. Muddy Waters.
hundred dollars. Gonna mess with you. I was made for good loving. And that's a fact. Yeah, a whole lot of money. I'm gonna stick around. Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for watching. Dave Curry, thanks for being my guest, man. Great show. We appreciate you coming down. Thanks. Great to be here.